Hello everyone. In the last video, we look at what is GPT-3 and how to create applications for GPT-3 like sentiment analysis, name entity recognition. And we also look at how to design a prompt for a GPT-3, which is nothing but writing instruction for a GPT-3 and giving examples from which GPT-3 can learn and then it can perform the same action on the test data. I will be adding link into the description. You can go and watch the previous video. One thing that we ignored last time is the parameters that we have for the models and we played around with the default parameter. One of the important parameter we have is the temperature parameter. Temperature parameter controls the randomness of the model output. If the temperature is zero, model become deterministic. Means if I run model on a same input multiple times, I will be getting the same output. And as I move towards the one, model become much more random and it will become a generative. In our case, if we want to give input like this, we are expecting the same output every time we run the same input. So ideally, we should have a temperature towards the zero. Whereas, let's say, if you want to ask GPT-3 to write jokes, in that case, you don't want model to produce the same joke every time. So in, so in that case, you need to have your temperature variable towards the one. But for now, we are going with the, with the zero. Other thing that I want to notice, so when we give test example, we can also make GPT-3 explicit that now we are expecting entities so that it can start creating those entities. And then we can submit a request for GPT-3. And then it can generate the expected output. Now this video, we want to take this prompt, what we wrote and experimented and create a Python program where we will integrate this prompt. To integrate our prompt, we can go to the prompt before we submit it. And then we can click on a view code. And here you could see, you get the Python code for the same GPT-3 request. And you also get code available in multiple languages, but we are going to use the Python code. We can copy that code and go to Google Colab notebook. First, we will install the OpenAI library and we can install it using pip install. Next thing we can see, to create the GPT request, we required an OpenAI API key. And we can get that key from your account. If you click here, you will see there is a view API key and you can go there and you will see your all the keys that you have created for the GPT-3 API. And if you don't have any key, you can click on create new secret key and it will generate the key for you. This key, I'm currently copying it. We can use this key in your application while making a request to GPT-3. And we can run this cell. The request has ran successfully and we can see what output GPT-3 has produced. We get in the response OpenAI object and it has one field or a key called choices. And here, these choices will be the list of predictions that GPT-3 done for us. And we can look at the specific this field choices. Since it is list, that we can see, but it has only one element. It has done only one prediction for us. So we can access the first element, which is the OpenAI response object. And in the text field of it, we have the output produced by the GPT-3. So we can now access the text field of it. And 
and we can see we have given this prompt which we got from here and in that prompt we have a sentence this one where we have sundar pichai as a person and the google as an organization and we can see gpt3 has a predicted sundar pichai as a person and google as a organization if you use the print you can see a better formatting yeah we could see this next thing here we have our test sentence is a hard coded but instead of hard coded this sentence will be coming from the user or any other service so we can treat it as an user input and then we can add this variable instead of this hard coded value in python to treat this as a variable we have to make this as a f string so that it will be treated as a variable and then we can submit the same request now and let's have a look at the choice object and the output and we can see we got the same output so this way we can make it more dynamic whatever user input comes we can pass that input to gpt3 and our prompt remains the same only the test example changes and once you have this output you can modify this output and consume the way you want as per your application requirement thanks for watching video if you haven't subscribe please do subscribe i will be creating similar nlp related videos which will include like gpt3 or hugging face transformer